Okay, so I was letting my dog out today, this morning, and I saw that it's overcast right now. So what I'm gonna do is I went to my backyard because I've been wanting to scan this wall back here. Now, I don't know what's back here. It's a little scary because there's nothing out here, but I got the rock with me to protect me right here. So yeah, the actual wall that I wanna scan is just right behind me right here. I've just been always been fascinated by it because it looks really cool. And that's what's really cool about living in Las Vegas is you get the city life, but you also have this beautiful landscape right, right behind your door. So yeah, let's go ahead and photo scan this um, little wall right here. And I think I'm gonna start over there because there's a lot of shadowy area right here, which I don't think is gonna look too good when it comes to photogrammetry. So I'm gonna be, be I'm gonna be very careful because, like I said, even though this is my backyard here, I don't know what's out here. I I hear a lot of animals being out here, so there's probably coyotes and some I don't know some dangerous stuff. So yeah, let's go ahead and do this. All right, so here we are back in reality capture. Let's go ahead and load up those images that we took outside. I'm gonna go to the folder, and we're gonna look for that thing I titled it back. So that's it. That's gonna add 226 images right here. And we're gonna go ahead and follow this along again. Continue my workflow. This is gonna show me the navigation again. And let's go ahead and align the images here. All right, so it's done uh, aligning the images. I think it took like a minute and a half to like two minutes, it's pretty quick. And as you can see, it did a pretty darn good job at aligning the images and I didn't have to do anything manual at all. I was all automatic. And what's cool about this is you can actually see, which is kind of weird, it actually maps out my camera. You know, like I took one here, I took one here, I took a I was pretty much going to the left. And you can follow that along. And then I stepped forward and I went to the right. And this is so darn accurate. And the thing is it doesn't even use GPS. I don't think, but this is really accurate to the to the how many steps I did because I stepped in and then I kind of stepped back by accident, which is crazy. You know, it's so accurate. But those are all the cameras I pretty much took. Now, you can probably see the problem right here on top. There's a big hole, and that's because I didn't have a drone. I mean, my height when I was taking this is just right here. And I got up close and I was putting my camera up when I took the closer images right here. But I am gonna be missing the top because I didn't have a drone, right? So there's a couple of holes in here. But overall, this looks pretty amazing for how fast it calculated. And it looks like I'm missing some of the floors. I need to maybe spend some more time because I did take some of the Take some pictures on the ground, but looks like it didn't capture it all. But that's okay. So as you can see right here, the component zero is what we're working with. And it looks like there's 226 images and it's using 226 cams. So that's actually pretty darn good because that means it's using all the pictures that I took. So let's continue. Okay, pretty much is going to tell me what's going on in the screen. And the ground plane looks pretty good. I'm happy with that ground plane and the reconstruction box. I'm also pretty happy with that because it's capturing everything. There's some stuff outside, but I don't really care about that too much. So continue again. And now what's going to do is actually compute a model so that we can actually make the CG because right now it's just point cloud. This is a point cloud, really dense point cloud system. So you can see those little dots. Oh. I just moved that again. I don't know why I keep doing that. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the workflow tab. And we're gonna do a calculation. Now I'm just gonna do a normal quality right now, okay? Because I think, to be honest, between these two, normal quality is actually good enough, I think. So yeah, let's do that now. All right, so it is finished computing the model and it's now created this 3d model you know this is it right here now as you can see there's really some holes in there i just i 
really, I guess those are really just the dark areas. Like this right here. It's just pretty dark in the actual um, rock itself right here. I remember this being really dark. And this, so. But overall, like I said, I'm pretty happy with this. Now let's see what we're going to do next. The reconstructions going to tell me. Let's take a look at the data. So this created a 98 point, 98 million triangles. And like always, I got the um, GPU out of GPU error. So this is actually not what it looks like. So I'll show you what I'm talking about right here. Not enough video memory. The scene is too big. So yeah. And I do have the RTX 3090, which has 24 gig. But I am planning on getting an A6000 maybe next year, hopefully, if everything works out. Okay, so let's take a look at continue now. Now, what we're going to do is actually unwrap this so we can texture it, okay? But before we do that, I'm probably going to do a couple of things. And one of the things, as far as cleaning up goes, I am going to go to the reconst reconstruction right here. And I'm going to clean the model. All right, finished in 22 seconds as far as cleaning up. As far as you see, we have model 2 now. And then what I will do is I'm actually going to select and filter out some of the polygons or stuff that we don't need. So what I'll do is go to advanced. And I'm going to select the largest connected component. So this is going to select the chunk, the biggest chunk on your 3D model here. Okay, so it's selected it, and it looks like it's actually connected well, <laughs> which is not good. So I'm going to go invert this, and I'm just going to filter anything out that's not connected to that big chunk. So it's 17 seconds, and then what I will do is I'm going to select marginal triangles now. Okay, yeah, I can see some small ones right here. It's selected, so that's good because we can filter those. If I go down here, you can really see it. All right, so we'll filter those as well. And this is actually going to close it off. The software is going to close it off anyway. So I'm going to leave everything as is like this. And then I'm going to do one more thing. And it's pretty much smooth. Use the smooth tool. I'm just going to do everything by default for now. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is do the simplify tool. So we can shrink this a little bit. Because 98 million triangles, that's uh, overkill. <laughs> so let's go to the simplify tool right here and we're going to use the same exact settings as before we're going to do 10 million triangles and this time around we're going to do a normal reprojection so that we can get a normal texture map now i haven't actually tried this yet but we'll see what happens this is the first project that i'm going to try this on i mean granted this is really my third photo scan imagery in uh, reality capture. So let's go ahead and simplify this as absolute 10 million uh, triangle. Okay, so it looks like it is finished simplifying. And as you can see, the color changed because we do have the normal reprojection, I think, because before when I disabled this, it didn't change the color. So anyway, let's go to our components right now. And we're going to see that we have this model number six that has 10 million triangles, 12 parts. It's pretty big. So what we're going to do next is actually unwrap this thing, which I think this is after reading some and watching some video. I think this is the workflow or the way to do it. But if not, please do let me know. Uh, but so far, I think simplifying it and then normal reprojection and then uh, actually unwrapping it after. So I'm going to go unwrap it right here. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the simplify tool. So that the unwrap parameters, I'm going to leave everything by default. So let's do eight. Oop. <laughs> Let's do eight for this one and let's click unwrap. Okay, so unwrapping the model looks like it took about like roughly 26 seconds. Wow, this is actually really dense. It's pretty cool. All right, and let's look at the uh, textures. Yeah, we have the unwrap layer. All right, so now what we're gonna do last is actually texture this thing. Okay, and it looks like it is done texturing, but as you can see, it does have some holes on top, like I mentioned, but we already saw that whenever the images were aligned, but oh man, this looks really freaking good. Now, let's go ahead and export this so I can put this in Unreal Engine 5 
because I'm actually pretty because I'm actually pretty excited to see what this is going to look like. So let's go down to our model texture. So let's go to model six. Let's take a look and see what's going on here. So 12 parts, 92 texture quality. Mm, I might actually redo that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is actually unwrap it again because you saw the texture quality is only 92%. So I'm going to delete model number six. I'm going to go to model five and I'm going to go to my reconstruction again. And then I'm going to simplify it once more. I'm going to disable normal reprojection because I'm going to try a different method. So I'm going to have absolute 10 million triangles and click simplify. Okay, so we simplified it again to 10 million triangle. Next, we're going to unwrap this thing again. So I'm going to click on unwrap settings, parameters right here, 8K. Now I'm going to increase the maximal texture count at 10 because it was at 8 and we were only getting 92%. So by increasing this to 10, we should be going past that 100% texture quality. Well, at least that's what I'm hoping for. Okay, it looks like it's finished unwrapping the model. Now what I'm going to do is actually set one of the images as a color correction reference. So right here, color correction reference, I'm going to enable this and I'm going to click on reconstruction correct colors. Okay, that looks like it's finished. That was pretty quick. It's going to switch us over to our checkboard view, which is okay. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to minimize this and go back to our model number six, which is 10 million triangles, we have an unwrap layer. Okay, so I'm going to save this just in case. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do now is do a texture reprojection. So in theory, what I'm going to do, I'm going to click this right here. I'm going to take the texture from model one and the normal maps from normal one for model one, and then reproject it to my model six. So in theory, I should get more quality because I'm using this high poly triangle right here. So model one is gonna be my source. My result is gonna be model six because that's my actual simplified model. So you can see right here, I'm gonna do a normal reprojection so we can get a normal texture out of this and see if this works. Yep, let's reproject. All right, it looks like it is finished texturing. And I mean, as you can see right here, like I said, we had a couple of holes there, but it's okay because overall, this looks absolutely amazing, crazy. All right, so let's export this to an OBJ, then import it in Blender, then export it to Unreal Engine 5. Okay, so let's go to our workflow. Let's go to our model and let's do wall, wall E. Now I'm going to export as an OBJ because Unreal Engine 5 doesn't take a big FBX straight out. I'm getting an error. So this is kind of like a little workaround that I kind of came up with. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to leave everything by default is OK. And this cost me $3.13, this uh, wall here. So yeah, that's actually not bad at all. I mean, although I think buying the forever license is still better, but that's, I will cross that bridge when I get a Tesla. Okay, so here we are in the environment that I created with a Quixel Mega Scan that I took a picture of. And what I'm going to do is actually import that rock here. All right, so I have a folder here named wall, and I'm gonna drag and drop that. I'm gonna drag and drop this OBJ straight in here and see what we get. Maybe we don't have to round trip to Blender. I don't know. Let's just try it. If not, I'll do it the old way. Okay, so that took about two minutes for this import options to come in. So let me just import it like this and see if we get something. Okay, so here we go. It imported. See what this looks like. I'm gonna double click it. It looks like it worked. Let me see if it looks right though. So let me drag and drop it in here. Oh, okay, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it's freaking tiny, dude. Um, okay, yeah, so let me let me scale this by like 10. Okay, maybe 50. Yeah, see, that, that don't look right, man. 
This is why I wasn't doing it straight in and real. If you know why it does that, look, you see there's like holes in it. It looks kind of transparent. Like it's not a, it's like it's missing some, like it's not smooth, you know? So that's what happens when you import that directly as an OBJ. So that's not going to work. Okay, so here it is in Blender. And I'm going to delete that light. It's rotated incorrectly, but it's okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let's take a look at the materials in here. Okay, so we have materials in there, diffuse, as a normal map. Okay, so let's export this now to an FBX. Okay, we're going to go with this. Okay, did it export? So let's take a look. Walls. Okay, yeah, it's in there. So click on save. Create a new folder here. Let's drag and drop this now. FBJ or FBX in here. Okay, so here we are. It is imported. And here is the static mesh. It's much bigger. And I'm going to move it back. And then I'm going to move it down. Wow. That looks pretty darn good, to be honest. See, now it's showing 10 million triangles. And that is crazy. Wow. That looks really freaking good. Um, Let me take a look at the normals real quick. Because... I feel like I have to flip this green channel here. So with the uh, with the normals, it's always gonna look better, especially if I took it from the original uh, scan, actual normal map. Look at all these little textures or uh, detail, and that's what's crazy, right? And and this is kind of like the argument now. For you to make this before, right, you would have to have. A lot of people with a lot of talent, with a lot of skills, because sculpting, sculpting something is one thing, right? But texturing something is a whole new freaking level. I mean, I could tell you right now, there's just no way. Like, I do not have the skills to do this from a sculpt. Let's just be honest. You know, I just, I don't have enough time to learn that. That is... That is some crazy creative stuff that you have to do. Being able to just take a picture, you know, 226 pictures I took, put it in a software and recreate that almost like one-to-one, -one, you know. I mean, this is my third scan model. And obviously still have a lot to learn, but it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And I know a lot of people kind of tell me, oh yeah, well, it's a scanned photo. Of course, it is going to look real, but what you're not understanding is Unreal Engine 5 renders it. I mean, I can put this model in Blender right now, and the amount of time that it's going to make me, or the amount of time I'm going to have to spend on it to make it look good, you know, rendering and all that stuff, is a lot more than just dragging and dropping it in a scene like this. That's all I did. Drag and drop it. Lumen is on. And that's it, you know? And, and that's what people don't understand. It's not just the scan that's important. It's the environment you're putting your assets in as well. Because that's the most important part. Like, you can have a really photorealistic model if it's, you know, some people are saying, oh, yeah, if you put that in Microsoft Paint, it's still going to look good. But you're not getting the point. The point is you're not going to get that environment to look good. <laughs> so let's go to our car here and I have a camera set up and I'll move this back so it, it's just so crazy to me because I started messing around with 3D and obviously I stopped and stupid right I wish I would have kept going when I was a teenager you know and that was like 3DS Max back in the day and now looking at th this now with the tools people have for free I mean, except for this car. This car I bought. This is a Liartis car right here. I didn't, you know, I didn't make this. This is a Liartis car. This is the tools you have now uh, versus to what we had back then. Oh my gosh. 
it is so exciting. Like I am excited for my kids, you know, I mean, if they end up liking the stuff I like, but just take a look at this. And this is probably going to be our um, our thumbnail here. And what's cool is if I get an even higher megapixel camera, you know, like I think the S5 has 24. Can you imagine that? Let me increase that to 200% because that's what we do. And I'm going to save this. <laughs> Let <laughs> me just save that. You, you see how I got really cocky that just like changed my mind. <laughs> Let's save this because I'm not going to lie. That's a 10 million triangle back there. Though I bet if I had enough money and I can actually get like a proper scanner, I can probably scan a car. There, uh, There's a couple of scanners out there that can actually scan cars, man. So, but, you know, we'll get there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is actually just turn this rock or this wall into nanite, and then I'm going to go take a look at the comments and see what we got. So I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to search for it, double-click it. I'm going to enable nanite right here, and I'm going to do 100% right here and apply the changes. Okay, so that took about five minutes to get nanite enabled, so let me minimize this. And now I'm going to go to Lit Nanite Visualization and Triangles. So you can see right there that it is Nanite enabled because it is a static mesh. So, I mean, those extra excess doesn't really count. But, yeah, that's a pretty dense freaking model. <laughs> so, yeah, I know some of y'all wanted to know if you can Nanite these. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're, ju they're just static meshes. So All right, so that's the end of the video. I just want to take some time to uh, read some comments and like some hearts some comments. All right, so I was talking about the theaters to see if I should see Black Widow or... He said no. All right, so I'm not going to watch any movies then. It's cool. Sell. Yes, I am trying to sell my area right now. Either way, I'll support CCP. CCP. I wonder what that means. I'll probably have to look that up. <laughs> this guy said, oh, my shiza. And he said, got to be real. Yeah, it's not real. Well, I guess it is. This is neither. Okay, yeah. <laughs> How do we know you're real? I have no clue. How do you know you're real? I don't know, dude. I'm excited for today when we play MMO VR games, realist graphics, even though I'm probably going to be dead. So, all right. So, I think that, so here's the thing, right? And it's messed up. Can big studios upgrade their MMOs? You know, like, I'm not going to mention any companies, but. There's a company out there that rhymes with a wizard. And they've had this game for like 17 years. That thing is... Let's just say when that game came out, I was 14 years old. And now I have two kids, a wife, and I'm about to be a grandpa soon. You, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, the big studios can definitely upgrade their stuff. But would they do it? No, because they're making... They're making so much money. I mean, why fix something if it's not broke? That company, I mean, they, they still have millions of players. And they have a monthly subscription, too. So, those guys are, man, huh. Those guys, freaking execs, are probably so rich right now. Uh, modeling texture needs to be a special. Yeah, and I actually, I think I mentioned this in a video as well. This is, I mean, there's people out there that just textures. You got a team that just textures. You got a team that just sculpts and model. I'm one guy with a camera and a computer. I mean, that's with zero skills, no college. And it's just insane what the technology is nowadays. You know, so definitely I, I said the same thing in the video. I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. I, I really feel like this now actually seeing walking around everywhere. That's what I feel like. Oh, first version of that dude's face. Oh, man. Meta humans, bro. What a GTX 1060. Oof. That is, oof, oof, that's rough. Did you use an RTX 3090? Yes. 24 gigs VRAM. Both are trash. Okay. I got you. I don't know. There's not a lot of movies coming out. I was, I just want to go to the theaters again. I haven't been in so freaking long. It's just black and not blacked. I don't know, dude. I just used the hashtag, and that's what popped up. Oh, I must have misspelled that then. My bad, bro. I hate Disney Marvel, so my opinion is always. All right. Okay, 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 okay. So 
All right. So Avengers uh Avengers Infinity Wars. It's probably number 2 favorite superhero movie of mine until the last 5 minutes. Okay. And I'll explain it this. I'll, I'll explain this to you. It was my favorite because whenever and this spoiler alert turn this off right now. Whenever they killed all of those heroes, I said, OMFG, that is as bold as it gets. Yes, freaking A, finally Disney nailed it with a superhero movie. And then it hit me. For like, after two minutes, it hit me and I said, crap. They're going to bring him back. And right after that, I already knew the next movie was going to be crap because the only way they could bring them back was time travel. And time travel is such a freaking cheat writing wise. You know, it's so it's just so convenient time travel. It's like when people get stuck in in, in like a plot and they get stuck and like, crap, how are we going to end this? Let's do time travel. We can fix everything. You know, so right after that, I said, no, they just destroyed this. If they would have left it as is and just killed half of those population, I think it would have been darker and grittier and I would have loved it more. But at the end of the day, it is a Disney movie. Sorry, that's a rant. But, you know, that's just my two cents. Graphics look real enough, but the movie and the object's kind of fake. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, physics, right? You can have really good image, photorealistic physics that's a different that's a different thing there you know what i mean so definitely gonna need some real physics in there thank you for all the content when i first heard i went to start my accents i was very excited since kind of trade accents for me it's just an all well, i'm not down the taxes but products after knowledge of data is all the mbm software with yes free that you pay 2700 a year for the cloud processing for wait 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 yeah see this is so I'm gonna make this bigger because there's a lot of there's a lot of misunderstanding right now with with the X Sense model, and I think they're trying their best to kind of fix that. But let me let me just read this lower. Taxes for product and keeping bank for us after not only for exporting but also for the MVN software, which is free, but you will have to pay per year. For the MVN Anime Plus. Uh, Manus, yep, okay. Okay, freelancer, projects. Mm. Okay, yeah, so Mac. So here's the thing with Xsense, right? It's, it's like driving, it's like owning a luxury car, you know? It's one of those things like it would be nice to have, but at the end of the day, we all drive the car that we can afford. You know, so right now that's a scooter because I sold my car because I'm trying to get a suit. So it's really at the end of the day, it's, I, I know there's a big argument about X Sense is so expensive, but you have to, you have to actually change it, it, to think that these are the same guys. If you watch The Mandalorian right now, they use Xsense suit. Uh, Zack Snyder's zombie movie, Xsense suit. Superman Returns, Xsense suit. So these guys are the top of the line. And, and, and what I was trying to get at earlier was if you're serious with motion capture, okay, let's say you're a teenager growing up and or like an, a young adult growing up and you want to, you want to get into mocap. What's cool about Xsense is you can get an entry level of Windows starter, right? And you can learn the pipeline. So whenever you grow up, they apply for jobs, Hollywood is using Xsense. So in your resume, you know how to use Xsense. You know, it's just there's just a million ways of looking at things. But at the end of the day, we all drive the car we can afford. I mean, that's. That's really, that's all I can say about that. You know, like for me, like I said, I'm, 
it's it's such it's a big move like for me to just go you know with something like that so right now i'm still kind of shopping around you know i'm not set to one thing yet because like you i'm also doing my research but like i said what's cool about xsense is you are actually getting to use what the professionals are using you know and as far as the NV and Anime Plus, and I know the, the pricing just went down recently. If you are going to, let me clear this out. If you are going to get the NV and Anime Plus, you can live stream from the software to Unreal. Use a tag recorder, a sequence recorder to record your data. And you can do it that way. Or if you want to live stream for a VTube, you can do it also with the plus. So you're right. So you don't have to pay for both. I think from reading your comment, you're like, I'm going to pay $2,700 a year for the plus and then cloud processing. That's, again, another benefit of the new cloud processing is because it gives you more options. Before the cloud processing, you had to make a choice, MVN plus or the professional. Okay. As far as I know, they didn't have they didn't have the free version. Correct me if I'm wrong. But now with the cloud processing, I can actually go in there and do like 30 minutes a month, $275. Okay, I got all my 30 minutes of mocap. I'm done. I'm gonna cancel the subscription. I don't have to use it again. And that's all I'm paying. You know, you know, so so you just get more flexibility. And like I said, for for a YouTuber man, I'm not gonna be able to afford that, right? So, you know. So it's just it's one of those things that is in my it's on my roadmap, but I'm I'm still going towards it, you know. Like I'm still doing my research, but yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so like and hearted, obviously Final Fantasy Nine. No, I'm just joking. Fast and Furious Nine. I I don't know, man. I feel like they're just dragging that thing now to make some money. <laughs> Stay away from this news fest. Watch Fast Night as a comedy where the laws of physics do not apply. Spoiler, Black Widow doesn't die in his film. Nice. I knew that 10 gig of your ammo there wouldn't be enough. What was NVIDIA thinking? Oh, no, nah, dude. Don't blame it on NVIDIA. NVIDIA's got a freaking 48 gigabyte VRAM right now. It's called the uh, RTX A600. A6000. They really need to start renaming those cards because if you look A6000, a camera is going to come up. They need to rename those. But um, yeah, no, they have a 48 gig. VRAM, but it's also, I think, $6,500. So that's way above my budget. And what I really want them to do is actually start, if Unreal would only support dual GPUs, it would be cheaper to get another RTX 3090 and get 40 uh, gigabytes of RAM then because you'll only be at $3,000 because I already have one. So I'll have to spend $1,500 to get another 24 gigs. So yeah. It's not an NVIDIA thing. It's more like a wallet thing, man. A real Engine 5 is cool, but imagine graphics cards rendering one gigabytes of rocks every frame. Yeah, but that's why you have the Nanite technology. If you if you Nanite it like what I, what I just showed you in the, the previous test I've done, <laughs> dude, it's, it's, it's just the beginning. Like that Nanite, it's, it's going to be crazy. Thinking about... Those two movies reminds me of another movie, Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> Graphics score is being reduced. Yeah, I don't know about this one, dude. This is, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it's still, I think it's still pretty rare right now. And I don't think it's, it's going to be still pretty bad until next year. Even though I left Unreal because of taxes and commissions, it's still fun to check your content. Oh, thanks, man. As far as I remember, they've changed your policy permissions. If you make under one mil, you don't have to pay anything. Yeah, that's right, I think. Yeah, but this is the thing, dude, Thomas. I mean, taxes you can't run away from. You know what I mean? It's it's um it's one of those things. Two things in life that are certain death and taxes. That's just the way it is, man. Uh can you help me with your get your desk? Uh which one? It's it's not really no, th this is two separate desks, bro. Um yeah, so this is one desk and then the other one is just another desk. I got them from Amazon real cheap, actually. For like yeah, no, no, not an L shape. That's just two desks put together in an L, you know, L uh, configuration. Two computers, seven, seven screens, bro. Good lord, it's a lot of screens. Uh, what? 
window after I have no idea what the heck that means. So we were like, uh, okay. Yeah, the meta human obviously still needs a lot of work, but it's still beta, actually. Wow, four decades with cell phone? Yeah, it is, because actually, wow, thanks for making me feel old. You're right. That was four decades ago. That was a little Motorola phones. Uh, Om Cook Ian. Um, be very good. Oh, it's Turkish. Oh, cool, man. Thank you. Sony <laughs> Les Ross. Yes, dude. This DIY mocap is awesome. You can destroy playing Minecraft. You just see all the red and Yeah, dude, Minecraft. Uh, Jesus, I don't even. Probably a, not a popular opinion, but I don't know what the big deal is for that game. I'm sorry. Uh, three minutes per more trade on my value. Yeah, so I already mentioned that XN stuff. I already had a whole rant about that. Okay. Uh, yep. Yep. This guy. Oh, well, he's commenting quite a lot. That's awesome. All right. All right. MGS. Metal Gear Solid. Okay. Yeah, that's one of my favorites, dude. Uh, yeah, James Q, you're the man. No, you're the man, bro. I got suck a turn control on rig. Doesn't seem to do anything. What? Oh, dude. <laughs> the control rig in Unreal Engine 5 right now, uh, it's better, but I still get a lot of crashes in there. Good luck in there, dude. Can you create any game cutscene you want in this software? Yes. I mean, I just showed you in that movie, bro. Stay angry. <laughs> oh, Floorbird changed his freaking picture today. Look at this. Look at you getting fancy on me, man. Your vids feel more beginner friendly than half the tutorials out there. I try to, man. I mean, to be honest, I'm making these tutorials for myself because I really forget a lot of stuff. I can... Nah, dude. Watch the full video. <laughs> Watch full video. That is that is Unreal Engine. Even with Night Judge Dread. <laughs> Just the original. The remake was garbage. Where's the Kickstarter? <laughs> Where are my favorite things you can get for free? Why on earth would you pay for things you can get for free? Uh, I don't know, dude. Link it to me. I mean, I've used a couple of free ones and they're not as good. So, yeah, link it to me, dude. You know, You know I like free stuff. How did you attach the MetaHuman head? I made the tutorial up here. As you can see this video right here. Go watch that. All right. Amazing. I said, and intrigued about the RTX 90 was positive to COVID or what? <laughs> no, dude. So it's just I got like a billion of crashes when making that movie. And it really pissed me off. All those crashes that you see at the end, that was real. I just screenshotted them. Um, but yeah, I was, uh, God, making that short was so painful. I said, no, bend the chair. Yeah, this chair they jacked up. Yeah, the tippity top. Oh, he's trying to rhyme now. You're at the tippity top and you're only halfway up. That's like a song. Yeah, man, that's what's up. Yeah, my goal this year is 50,000 subscribers. I'll be happy with that, dude. That is it. No more for me. I have a question how much you earned so far since you joined YouTube. Um, I've had a YouTube channel since 2009, and without Unreal content, let's just say I've spent more than I earned. I just started monetizing it maybe two, two, three years ago, and I didn't start making money until maybe three, four months ago when MetaHumans came out, and the channel actually started to get, um views and stuff so unfortunately youtube is really just one of my mo my top money maker um and sometimes it's weird because like last month they the estimated earning for me was like four thousand but they only gave me like two and that was my highest highest month ever and the crazy thing is they don't have a support page where you can ask why but yeah 
I was supposed to get 4,000 according to AdSense, but I got like 2,000 something. So that sucked, right? So that's why I'm having to sell a lot of stuff right now. And then the grant again disapproved. So yeah, I'm selling a lot of my stuff right now. Uh, pay for the gadget and pay again for motion capture. No, thanks. Yes, please. Yep. I already talked about that. What is that? Is that a, is that a, what kind of, what kind of emoji is that? Oh, <laughs> zero. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. I mean, with, with Unreal, the Unreal high is gone. And my channel is like, I wish I can show you the graph. It's, it's down spiraling actually right now. Uh, Yes. That office that can be raised to be used? Yes, yes. So the left one is a crank version, and then the one on the right is an automatic version. It has a panel on there. When UE5 Waifu, Max Payne. It's a good game. What the heck does that mean? I downloaded a car for free. That's good. I don't know how I did that. Hope it wasn't illegal. These <laughs> realistic meta humans are getting creepy. <laughs> Man, that's ScarJo. That's ScarJo, Joe, man. Real plants don't clip. Yeah, I got that one. Oh, and Splits got that. PUBG. Ugh. You know what's funny, though? Funny story. Real story. If I didn't quit playing PUBG, I wouldn't have gotten bored and learned Unreal Engine 5. Okay, so I was playing PUBG with my Paolo and my homeboy Mikey, Pickle Pete, for a while, like on and off. But one day, PUBG, again, blew hole. The guy, the developer, forgot his name, player unknowns. He's done this a million times with his games. He leaves the games. He's, he creates the games, sells the games, and just leaves it. When they started putting bots in there, I was like, okay, I'm done. I quit, and then I got bored, and now I'm doing Unreal Engine stuff. So thank you. Unreal, uh, I mean, thank you, PUBG, for putting those bots in because that's what ultimately led me to where I'm at now. So, like, what does that say? Yeah, dude, this is some Black Mirror stuff right now with Unreal, though. It's pretty crazy. All right, and that's pretty much it. That is all I got as far as comments. Sometimes I just like to do this because I really can't be where I'm at right now without, A, my wife. Obviously, because she's always taking care of the kids when I'm up here recording stuff. And B, the, the subscribers, you know. So sometimes I try to answer it with my fingers, but sometimes it's faster to just scroll down here and answer y'all with comments. That being said, if y'all have any questions, let me know. And uh, zibbidi doodah.